Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the Baby Boomer Entrepreneur TV slash podcast. I'm your host Andrea Stenberg and today I have with me Mark Satterfield. He's the founder and CEO of Gentle Rain Marketing and he specializes with uh, working with the consultants, advisors and small business on how to get consistent streams of new business and uh, if, if you can see this, this is a copy of his new book, The One Week Marketing Plan, and I'm really happy to talk to Mark about it. So Mark, welcome. Thank you so much for, for having me, and thank you for displaying my book in all its fine red glory. So one of the things that I liked about um, what you said is you said businesses don't fail because of poor products or services. They fail because of a shortage of customers and that occurs because they lack a consistent marketing strategy. Is that what inspired you to write this book? Yeah, very much. I actually wound up writing the book that I wish I had had when I started my business back you know, now 20 years ago. I mean, there's there's a lot of books out there that tell you what you should be doing, but there aren't many that actually tell you precisely how to do it. And, you know, like a lot of small business owners, I got overwhelmed with marketing. I thought it was too complicated, too expensive, wouldn't work. But I learned that if you follow a system and that's what we really outline in the uh, in the one week marketing plan. If you start, a, if you implement a system, you can have a very effective marketing plan up and running, doing what it's supposed to do in really just five days. And do you, are people actually able to put together a marketing plan in five days if they read your book? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it, you know, start you on Monday uh, where we. Uh, where we develop a, uh, a, a niche marketing campaign and it follows you through Friday where you start to drive traffic to this, uh, to this website that you've created and you'll have the whole thing up and running and best of all, you really don't need to spend, we, we budgeted it at $300 and you, know, you could certainly spend more if you wanted to but uh, you know, it's not going to cost you a lot of money and, and the key point is if you get this marketing system up and running, then you can bolt on other things. You know, you can do Google Hangouts. You can do you know some of the advanced social media stuff that that, that you teach. But the important thing is, you know, get the plane in the air so that you're getting you know, that consistent stream of brand new prospects. So, um, why do you think so many small business owners resist creating a marketing plan? Because I know I see that a lot when I'm talking to people. Is it just they just don't, um, for whatever reason, they kind of don't want to actually put something in writing. Well, I mean, it's there. There, there are a lot of reasons, and and I think the big one is that we get overwhelmed. There, there's just so much information out there. Uh, information about uh, using social media and free reports and advertising and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and we just get so much that we get overloaded and we say, you know, I, I'm afraid I'm going to mess this up. I'm, I'm afraid that I'm going to do it wrong. And it, it's that fear of messing up, I think, that stops people from, from implementing it. Whereas the reality is, you know, we start small. We create something that's basic. We create something that's not hard to implement. And then once we have that up and running, which is very easy to do, then we can add on and we can make this thing as big as uh, big as you want. Now, in your book, on day one, you ask people to choose a niche. Uh, why? Why does that an important place to start? Well, the primary reason is because it is such a noisy world out there. We're bombarded with marketing messages. And so the messages that we pay attention to are those that we really feel someone is communicating to us, uh, that we see a reflection of ourselves in the marketing material. And in order to do that, we, we, we have to niche. We, we have to focus on a very specific audience to get that attention. Now, he, here's a key point that, that sometimes people, people forget. I'm not suggesting 
that your entire business be set up around one particular niche. I'm just saying that your initial marketing needs to be because it's just so devilishly hard to get that initial attention and that's the reason why we want to market, we want to have as micro a niche as, as we possibly can in order to get the process started. Now I know a lot of people really resist this idea of of the niche, and you know, like uh, you know, I've seen like health alternative healthcare providers say, "Well, I can serve anybody." So how do you, if 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 that's true, like you have people across a broad spectrum, how do you pick that niche, even if you recognize that you know, that's not going to be the only niche you serve? How do you pick a niche to start with your marketing plan? Well, I I, I was the poster child for for what you're talking about, and you know, I thought. You know, gee, everybody needs marketing assistance. You know, therefore, I should market to everybody. Um, the the problem again is that you know you you got to get their attention. So so where do you start? Well, the the best place to start is you look at your current clients and where have your current clients come from. So if you've had current clients that have been in manufacturing or retail or have been uh, holistic health providers or they've been in uh, medical services, wherever your, wherever your previous clients have come from is a good place to start. The other way to think about it is where's your ideal client? Who are the people that you really enjoy working with? You know, what's what's that type of person like? Uh, is it male? Is it female? How old are they? What are they involved in? Uh, marketing is a very powerful gun, and it will get you who you aim it as. So you want to focus on who's that ideal person that you want, and 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 try as much as humanly possible to go after that. No. I wish I could remember who said this, but I heard uh, somebody say that when you're choosing a niche, think about it as dating them rather than getting married because you can always change your mind afterwards. Uh, so, and, and I think that's, that's one of the things that holds people back is what if I choose the wrong niche? You know, and, and the wonderful thing is now we, we can change everything. You know, we, we can change the copy on our website. We can change the free offers that we make. Uh, if, you do, if you focus on a, uh, on a particular niche and, and you find that it's not ideal, uh, you can change it. I mean, classic case for me, I started off working primarily with consultants and advisors, and it went really, really well, and I thought, this was really great. You know, who else might need this kind of marketing? Hey, attorneys might need this kind of marketing. So I did a niche marketing campaign to attorneys, got a bunch of attorneys, and bless their heart, as we see down here in the South, they weren't a good fit with me. So all you do is simply shut that part down and you go after other niches, other groups that are much more compatible with you. So you're, you're exactly right. You know, just because you decide on a niche doesn't mean that you're stuck there forever. I mean, especially with the one-week marketing plan. You know, if you do a niche marketing campaign and you decide this isn't a niche I want to really focus on, well, yeah, you're out a week, but that's about it. And you can develop your next marketing campaign the following week. So it's 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 really not a big deal. Do, um, do you have any examples of of people who chose interesting niches and had great success with them? <laughs> I I had a I, I got it. This is one of my favorite clients. I I, I I love these people. They he was a physician, completely burned out on being a physician, and he got through a. The series, which too long to explain now, but uh, he decided to focus on tattoo removal, and he is now one of the largest tattoo removal physicians in the western part of of, of the country, and he uh, he he enjoys it. He says one of the things that I really enjoy the most are the stories that people tell about why in the world they got the tattoo in the first place. <laughs> And he says he gets this enormous sense of satisfaction out of getting rid of the tattoo now that people have kind of out, outgrown it. But, you know, th th there's lots of examples. And But I think the real key in terms of niching is that it enables you the opportunity to get that ideal client, the, the client that you really want. 
by whatever criteria you choose. And one of the things that we discuss in the book is what that criteria is. And it's a helpful lesson. I went through it myself. And I, I, think, uh, I, I think everyone would find it to be helpful to really drill down and distill the, you know, the type of client you most want, especially if you're in a business which theoretically you could do business with everyone. But you don't want to do business with everyone. Focus on that ideal one. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll help you get that sorted out. Okay. Now, the next thing you talk about in the One Week Marketing Plan is having people put together some kind of a free offer. And I know in the internet marketing world, people are familiar with this, but people who have a bricks and mortar business or provide their service face to face, sometimes that's a little bit harder. Uh, does, that, does that idea work for just about everybody? Just about everybody. Just about everybody. Um, the, the, the key with the, the free giveaway uh, is to build trust, build credibility, get that initial attention. So it, the, the topic of, of the free giveaway is, is key. And all of us who are in business, we solve a problem of some type. So it's a matter of thinking about what are the various components that go into solving that problem and how can I give some information that's going to be that's going to be helpful? Uh, there, I have a friend named David D'Angelo who uh, has a, one of the big uh, dating advice sites, and his free giveaway for many years was what he called the Kiss Test how to determine if she wants to be kissed on the first date. And I mean, come on, if you're the least bit interested in dating, I mean, that, you know, is kind of a cool thing. I'm, you know, I've been married for, for a long time, and I thought it was kind of an interesting thing to, to read. High curiosity value. So um, we, have a, uh, we have a fellow uh, that we interviewed for the book who is a wine merchant, or I'm sorry, a perfume merchant, and uh, he wanted to sell perfume over the, by mail. But the big issue there is, are you getting the real stuff? And so his free offer was seven ways to determine whether the perfume you order by mail is actually the real thing. So again, the more that you can go into items of curiosity, the more you can provide some just basic, free, great free information, that's what hooks people's attention. That's what gets them to raise their hand, express that initial interest, and then from there, we can convert them from idle prospect into actual engaged and paying client. Now, um, I know for for a lot of business owners, I mean, one of the things is, you know, like we're good at what we do, and oftentimes the things that we're best at are the things that are the easiest for us. So sometimes it's hard to pinpoint what is it that that thing that you do for people. Uh, so if somebody's struggling, saying, I don't know, I don't know what to, how to um, decide what to give somebody to, to help build trust or to get, get attention, what, what steps does somebody need to go through to uh, get to that point? Well, there, there's a series of questions, and again, not to be overly plugging the book, we, <laughs> that's what we cover in, uh, in, in the book in a great detail. But you know, one way to think about it is, you know, on one, think about it on, on a spectrum. On one end of the spectrum is the person with a problem, on the other end of the spectrum is the person without the problem. Well, what are the steps they have to take to go from I'm person with problem to person without problem? And the more that you can give some information about one of those steps that they have to take, that's going to be the issue of, of curiosity. That's going to be the issue of, uh, of, of interest. Um, I mean, I'll give you a, a real quick example. I mean, this is the first time I've done a, uh, uh, done a Google Hangout. And not, I'm, I'm a internet marketer who you know, has no technical ability whatsoever, which is actually good news for all small business owners because, trust me, I mean, if I can do this, everybody can do this. But here we are. We're supposed to be on Google Hangout. And I'm going, that's cool. You know, wonder what Google Hangout is. And even more important, how do you actually get onto Google Hangout? So I Google how to get on Google Hangout, and there's this lady who offers a free little video on how to get onto your Google Hangout. And of course, you have to opt in in order to get it. So now I'm on her list. And you know, who knows? Maybe she's got some other stuff that you know will be of interest to me to uh, to, to read. And you know, I don't know. Maybe there's some stuff that uh, you know I might want to buy down the road. So again, it, it's answering those questions. 
You know, how do you actually get on Google Hangout? How do you know if she wants to be kissed? How do you know if this is real perfume I'm buying? It, it, it's those kinds of things. But uh, we've got this series of questions that uh, you know, we, we put people through in, in the book. And literally, I mean, it, it's not a matter that you don't have any free thing to give away. The bigger challenge is which one should I do first? Now, I know one thing that I hear from a lot of people is saying, well, if I give away something for free, like why are they going to buy from me? You know, why should they pay if if they're getting this free thing? So, uh, what do you say to somebody who's sitting there, sitting at home, listening to this, saying, "Oh, that that's making me nervous." Sure, uh, I, I guess there's two things. One, you're not giving away the entire solution. Uh, you're you're giving away a part of of, of the of the larger solution. Uh, you know, the other part is that. Um, the, the biggest reason I'm not going to do business with you is because I'm skeptical, because I don't trust you, because I think that you're not really going to provide me value. And being afraid, of being, being afraid of being ripped off is one of the most powerful motivations for me not to do business with someone. The easiest way to overcome that is to give people some really cool free information right up front. Now, are there going to be people that take that free information, run with it, and uh, don't do business with you? Absolutely. But guess what? You know, those you know, freebie, time-sucking vampires, they were never going to give you any money. So, you know, we've, we've tested this back and forth, and yes, it's a little bit of a leap of faith, especially for people who, you know, have that argument. And, and I understand that argument, because I was in that camp at one point in time. But you're far better off to give people something really cool, really helpful, because it builds that trust, builds that credibility. And that is just so important, especially uh, in this day and age where you know, we've all got lots and lots of competitors. Well, and the other thing with the, the free offer is sometimes people will, you know, they'll get the free offer and they're not really ready to buy yet, but maybe six months, eight months, a year down the road, they may, you know, once they've had a chance to sort of get comfortable with you, make the purchase. I know I've done that in the past where I've gotten a free offer and gotten on somebody's email list and, and kind of read all their stuff for a while and then, at, you know, after many, many months go, oh, you know what, now I'm ready to take it to the next step because I've sort of got the basics, but I need, need a little bit more. And that's, that's um, probably part of the process for some people who are not ready to buy today. You're, you are exactly right, especially for any of us that sell services, is that there is this time lag where we have to get comfortable. Um, I have this client in London who's a financial advisor. He had been on my list for two and a half years, and we were talking, and I said, you know, you got my stuff for two and a half years. Did, did you actually read it? And my bet was that it all kind of, you know, had been going into a spam filter somewhere. He said, yeah, I did. I didn't read everything you sent, obviously. But I read periodically as my interest, you know, increased in your particular topic, and then eventually I became a client. And you're exactly right. The key to giving the free piece is it gets people to raise their hand, gets them to connect with you. And then from there, you can build that relationship. And if you're good at building that relationship, then when they're finally ready to pull the trigger, you're going to be the one who, in effect, it's your business to lose. Yeah, but the building the relationship then is, is sort of the, the next bit. So, you, you know, the first step is just to get their attention and get them to be on your list. But then building the relationship is really the key part of this whole process, at least that's my opinion. So what what do we need to do once we get them past that free report? You know, it's, it's everything from the, the, the simple to the complex. On a basic simple level is to send period people a series of emails that uh, automatically follow up on the free information. You know, did, did you find it helpful? I would love some feedback. That's a very powerful email to send. Uh, 
because now you're starting to engage with people. You're asking people for, for their opinion, uh, giving people additional tips, giving people additional ideas, uh, answering questions that other people have had. Um, I mean, that series of emails that goes out, uh, you know, once a week, once every 10 days, you know, literally in, into the future can be uh, can be extremely important or extremely powerful. Um, a little bit more of advanced strategy is, uh, for example, we do a video newsletter. So I write two blog posts a week. I mean, I'm not a huge blog writer. I only write you know twice a week. Uh, but on every Friday, I record a little video, and it's me, you know, sitting here in the you know the office. It's a talking head video, and uh, it, it's reminiscent. If you remember the old Walt Disney show, I and mean, if you're my age, you remember Walt. Uh, you know, younger like you, you know, you probably remember Michael Eisner. Um, you know, he'd come out in the beginning, and he'd say, you know. You know, in tonight's episode of the Scarecrow of Romney Marsh, uh, this and that is going to happen, and thanks for joining us. And we do the same thing with the video newsletter. It's, you know, thanks for joining me this week. I've got some stuff I think you'll be interested in. In my first article, I do this. In my second article, I do that. Uh, I think you're going to find them helpful. Uh, again, thanks for being a subscriber, and I'll talk to you this time next week. Now, we get huge open rates. I'll be the first person to admit that not everybody reads the blog, but they like seeing the video. They're starting to connect with us. We're starting to build a relationship. We're becoming a real person, and, and that's so crucially important. Now, as, as we know, any of us have gone through kind of sales training 101. We all know, you know the key phrases are know, like, and trust. They have to know who we are. You know, they have to trust us in terms of credibility, but they also have to like us. They have to, you know, they have to feel like you know, we're, we're really sincerely interested in them. Uh, and uh, you know, doing these video newsletters on a weekly basis is you know just a really powerful tool. And again, you know, we do it with just a little simple video camera. You know, I'm sitting here. Uh, you know, the production costs are close to zero. But again, we're coming across as real live people. I would imagine in Google Hangouts, you know, this is the same kind of thing that you're doing. You're you know, you're building credibility with your followers. They're getting to know you, getting to know your guests. And so that rapport starts to build, and that is so crucially important, whether we're selling products or whether we're selling services. Oh, I, I agree completely, and that's one of the things that I like about video is it sort of gives people a chance to kind of virtually look you in the eye, which is you know when when they're into into your storefront or you're meeting them somewhere, they can do that in real life. But video kind of gives people a chance to do that virtually, so they start feeling like you're a real person, not just some anonymous entity on the internet somewhere. Absolutely. I mean, when I talk, I don't talk to that many people on the phone, but when I do, invariably, the first thing they say is, you know, I really feel like I know you. And it's all because of, of the videos, it's all because of the messages. You know, I'm not that different than my than my clients. I mean, I was a small business person. I struggled. I, you know, almost went bankrupt twice. I mean, so it's it's not as though I just kind of emerged from on high with all this, you know, incredible knowledge that you know, you know, that you know, Zeus gave me. I mean, no, I struggled. I mean, my wife was often saying it'd be great if you got it right the first time, you know, just once. But you know, I persevered and and, and I learned and. You know, really, at this stage now, what I'm doing is is passing it on, and and really trying to, really trying to help small businesses that have this dream, but are struggling because they don't have the consistent streams of brand new clients. And and to me, that's such a shame because if if you put together a marketing system, and it doesn't have to be complicated, but if you do it, this issue of where is my client coming from, that that goes away. Life gets a heck of a lot more fun. Uh, that that is so true. The when you when you're not worrying about you know, where you're going to pay the mortgage from, it's a lot easier to have your business, uh, you know, go in every day. Uh, how long do you spend? So you're doing a video, you're doing two blog posts, and sending out an an email. How long does that take you each week? Um, well, I'm I'm a pretty fast writer, so and, and I I found the time of day when I write best, which is first thing in the morning. So uh, writing an article usually takes me about 45 minutes, uh, and then 
the video, uh, yeah, depending, there are days where I can't seem to get my tongue correct in my mouth and I have to shoot it, you know, three or four times. A lot of other times it's on the first take. Uh, you know, I mean, the real key with video is to act like you act in real life, not to come across as a serious video dude. Um, yeah, you know, if, if you come across as who you are in real life, if your intent is to, uh, you know, to, to educate and to help, I mean, people just love that. And, you know, I mean, the other part, of course, is people that have been on my list, and I'm a big believer in this, is that you want to share things about your life. So people who have been on my list, I mean, they know about my they know about my wife, they know about my two cats. As a matter of fact, there have been times when the cat has actually jumped up on the desk when you're videoing. Um, you know, but I mean, that's that's life. That's, you know, we're, we're all human beings. And the more that we we allow people to see the human element, the more they realize that, hey, you know, this guy isn't that different. This lady isn't that different. If they can do it, I can do it too. And then, you know, then we're building that level of confidence. And this is really all about confidence because from a technical standpoint, as I mentioned earlier, I mean, if I can do this, everybody else certainly can do it. I think um, a lot of people struggle. Like I know there's there's sort of the idea on the internet that people are sharing too much and people are you know doing you know saying too much about their personal life. But I find entrepreneurs, particularly my audience, the baby boomer entrepreneurs, are too nervous about sharing uh, personal information, and and so they they kind of resist sharing anything. But I I agree with you. You have to share some things. Do you have kind of like a rule of thumb about deciding what you'll share and what you won't? I mean, you're right. And, and I think everybody's different. I mean, we don't want this to turn into a lifetime movie. That's, you know, that that's true. But uh, on the other hand, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm comfortable with, with, with sharing a lot about, you know, my, from, from a business standpoint, about my struggles, about what I'm doing. Um, I mean, people you know, know that I play golf, albeit badly. And, you know, people know about my my wife. The people know about you know the cats. Um, you know, I'm actually taking people on tours on, of of the home. Um, not that they would necessarily be interested in that, but you know, um, but so I, I tend to be a little bit more open. But you know, it doesn't mean that you have to do it like I do. It, the important part is that if you come across as a real individual, if, if you come across as someone who really cares about your clients and customers, and that you're really sincerely interested in helping them, I mean, that gets conveyed. It gets conveyed in print, that gets conveyed in video, and that is just really powerful stuff. And that, in and of itself, separates you from your competition who's hiding behind this you know, corporate mask. Uh, I mean, I, I remember I, I worked at Pepsi and I worked at Kraft Foods. And I worked for this guy who's a wonderful boss. And he said, you remember at the end of the day, people don't buy from corporations. People buy from people. And you know, the wonderful thing about a marketing system, if we put it in place, if, if we do it right, you know, not only does our... Uh, does our technical expertise, not only does our credibility get enhanced, but we become real people to them. And we become the kind of people that they want to interact with, that uh, that they want to work with. And, you know, that makes, it just makes everything a lot more fun and it makes things a lot more uh, profitable. Absolutely. Well, um, I think we're just about at the end of uh, our time. Do you want to tell people where they can get a copy of this? Um, yes, buy my book, please. Um, <laughs> uh, the books on uh, the books on Amazon, the books in Barnes and Noble, uh, and uh, and when you buy the book, uh, there's a, um, a there, there's a little coupon on the inside where you can register the book and you can actually get uh, a free companion uh, video series, which I think people will uh, will really like, but. It's for sale, as they say, wherever books are sold. So, uh, really, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm very proud of the, book, of the book. It's my, it's my eighth one, and as I say, it's the. I, I wrote the book 
that I wish I had had when I started off on this entrepreneurial journey. Well, I can uh, definitely say it's definitely worth uh, people taking a look, particularly if you don't have a marketing plan that's working. Um, go out and get the book. And so thank you again, Mark, for joining me today. And uh, everybody, this uh, thank you for joining me uh, for another edition of the Baby Boomer Entrepreneur TV. And I will see you soon. Yeah.